right, so coming back from our user to our user mode application, we have declared two IOCTL codes in our driver. So let's copy paste these into our communications header plus plus. And we'll also copy paste the uh, structs that we have declared on our kernel side into the communications header plus plus file. And let's not jump too much uh, further. We're going to create a new header file. We're going to call it offsets header plus plus. I'm going to copy paste the pre made list of Hayes Dumpers GitHub. And at me, I have to um, include sctdef should be good to go and now we'll just have to adjust our kernel interface so we'll have to de declare two more new functions one of them is going to be read, read virtual memory and the other one is going to going to be write virtual memory and for that we will have different scenarios later on maybe if you use your uh, user mode application to communicate with your driver you might want to read different kind of types uh, type of values. So for that we're going to do template type name type and we're going to return the type itself uh, well the value obviously and it's going to be read virtual memory we'll have to pass a process ID to read from uh, it's ugly okay and we'll need an address to read from and a size of course okay so here we want to declare the buffer as i've stated before uh, we're going to make or allocate a buffer on our user mode application and then later on when we uh, send the IOCTL code to our driver, the driver knows where to read the data into and that is going to be our buffer that we're going to return back. Okay, so we're going to declare kernel read request, read request. And this is where we, tear, this is where we tell the information uh, in our structs. So basically, this is the place where we, where we declare them. And our process ID is going to equal with our process ID. Um, the address is going to be the read address. Um, the pbuff is the buffer that we have declared up here. This is where we want to uh, read uh, the data into. So basically, tell our driver to write it into the address of our uh, buffer. And the size is obviously the uh, size as usual. Okay, then now we just have to send the IOCTR code to our driver. So we're going to do if device IO control and each driver. IO read request gonna be the reference of read request size of read request this is what we uh, these are the parameters that the drive reads from and we want the data back into our read request well the address of the address of the read request and the size of read request and we're gonna pass zero zero So if this is successful, we can return our buffer safely. But anyway, even if it wasn't successful, the buffer is just going to have its default value due to the type, hopefully. And uh, we'll just get zero if we are reading an integer, for example. Moving on to write virtual memory, we're going to do the same template type name. Oops, type name type. Let's fix this space. And we're going to return a boolean, write virtual memory. And the parameters are almost exactly the same. We'll have addition. And the, the, the addition itself is going to be the type and write value. We can rename this just for uh, transparency. This is going to be called write address. 
And now we will have to declare the uh, the kernel write request itself. We also want to check for invalid handle just in case. So here we uh, return buffer. And at write virtual memory, we're gonna we're not going to do anything specific. It's just gonna be uh, return false because uh, I said false because uh, we're returning a boolean. And here we'll uh, basically do the same. Uh, I'm just gonna copy paste this because it's uh, a lot more faster for me uh, than typing it down. I'm gonna rename this to write request. The address is going to be write address and the buffer is, well, we don't have a buffer here, it's just our write value. That's why we want to write the data into. And uh, I guess it's time to call device I control. So if device I control again, H driver, IO write request, the reference of our write request struct, the size of write request uh, and zero zero because we don't want anything back and bytes returned um, yeah we need to return something uh, we need to pass something so just quickly gonna declare the word bytes pass the reference of bytes and null And if, is, if this is successful, we have uh, successfully written our value into the process. And if it wasn't, then we just return false. Well, we still do not know, it. even if the IOCTL code passes, we don't know for sure if uh, the value has been written correctly. So you have to check that yourself. And now we are kind of done with the IOCTL part. Now we'll just have to do uh, something like declare some sort of a behavior to uh, alter uh, CSGO's memory. Okay, so let's head back to our controller and here we'll start making use of our read and write virtual memory functions and offsets obviously. So here we'll get the local player of, uh, of our CSGO player. So local player address gonna equal with driver read virtual memory, we'll have to uh, specify a type and that's going to be our uint32t. Um, we'll need a process ID uh, in this case. So right now I do not have one because I was lazy to create an ISCTR code. Uh, so we're going to cheat a little bit, no problem, no hassle. So let's just type something here for now. Um, and our read address is going to be client address, which is uh, that we have declared here. So it's just simply address. And it's going to need a, um, what was it, DV local. Um, yeah, DV local player. I just have to use the namespace of uh, his dumper. There we go. And yeah, the size of uh, uint. 32t. Okay. And what did I do wrong? Uh, yeah. Um, my excuse. Okay. So what we do here is we uh, will need to get the process ID of CSGO. I could just quickly find it uh, by using different type of uh, functions, or I could also uh, store it in the driver which I believe we have already done. No, we haven't actually. Um, so here, if we have our uh, CSGO client loaded up, we could also store the, uh, the process ID here by saying process ID is gonna get declared here. And going back to our events, we could do process ID equals casting handle into a ulong process ID. And basically in the same way we could uh, retrieve the process ID. I might as well do this instead. Um, let's try to build. Yeah, the usual pointer cast warnings. Um, four, three, one, one. And rebuild. 
Okay, hides global declaration. That's not a problem. And yeah, that's for a different project. I don't even know why he's bringing that up. So 4459. Declaration of process ID hides global declaration. Um, oh yeah, I, I see what it means. I'm stupid. Let's uh, roll back that one. Uh, not too much. Never mind. So in order to fix this, we can rename our um, variable name to something a little bit different, like this. There we go, and now we have the warning that I accidentally deleted, and should be good to go. Okay, and uh, now we could do an ISCTL code again to retrieve uh, that process ID back to the client. Um, well, we could do it quickly. It's it's not too uh, time taking. Um, we can do a new IOCTL code. IO request process ID code is going to be different. We go back to our communication header plus plus, declare the same. Go back to communication C, and we're just basically going to do the same thing as here. So nothing new. Else if IO, uh, what did I name it? I forgot. Do, 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 do. Request process ID. And we're going to pass process ID, which was declared in our data header file. And now we're going to change the debug message process ID requested, go back to our uh, user mode application. We can copy paste the whole function here again. Don't even mind it. Request, or we could do um, get process ID IO uh, request process ID and this is not the address but more like a process ID and there we go this should do the job or more like the trick uh, to get our process ID so now we can do um, long what's that process ID driver get process ID and we can replace that okay so now we have uh, we should have our local players address in this variable so what we do want to do is a quick example is that we want to overwrite the uh, flashbang effect it goes from uh, 0 to 255 to my knowledge so if we want to make the uh, flashbang effect disappear all we have to do is just replace the variable each time to 0 and the effect is like totally gone so for that we'll have to uh, do driver write virtual memory process ID and we'll have to write it into our local player address. Ooh, oops, uh, local player address plus um, it was, uh, let's use Hayes dumper signatures. It should be M flash, no. Um, wasn't in the signatures. Do, do, do. Let me check. Wasn't net war, was it? Yeah, it was maybe. Okay. Um then we're gonna use net war M flash max alpha. There we go. And we wanna type or or write zero into that memory address and the size of float 
and that's it. Or a bit more appropriate, but it looks kind of weird, is the size of zero uh, float in uh, memory terms. So this piece of code should allow us to grab the local player address once again from the uh, using the client DLL's uh, base address, then local player, and then moving on to writing the uh, memory address, we just simply grab our local player's address and basically zero out its m flash max alpha uh, offset. Uh, but sorry, before we uh, move on to launching CSGO, we're going to go to CMD, launch it up as an admin, and type sc start guided hacking. But uh, let's make sure we have the latest driver compiled just in case. There we go. Run. Didn't we didn't get blue screens and things like that. Uh, now we are free to launch CSGO. All right. So now we have CSGO uh, launched up. We have the client DLL found and we also have the process ID. Let's see what happens if we launch up our user mode application uh, just in order to uh, make it a little bit more pretty. I'm going to do client address here just to change the text and then process ID here. And I don't want the hex format here, obviously. Let's compile our controller, see what happens. Oh, code generation fail initialized. Oh, crap. Um, all right, in this case, I'm just going to remove this check here to move on. Okay. And now we go to our compiled controller for now. And let's see what happens. So we didn't crash, luckily. Um, the client address was requested. The process ID was requested. So let's see if we have done our program good. Let's relaunch the uh, controller, not this directory. Controller, uh, just to make sure we want to launch it as administrator, just in case. Let's get a flashbang. Throw it. And there you go. Flashbang is a no-go. So basically this is how you uh, read and write virtual memory into uh, a specific application using a driver. Well, something like to uh, finish up this tutorial, we're going to do, uh, I'm going to present you how to exactly read that value just one more time. So we're going to do driver, read virtual memory, float, process, ID. We're going to copy paste the uh, netvar and size of float and you can print this value out so later on we'll be still using uh, games to provide samples but the next video is mainly going to be about debugging OB register callbacks and callback and what it does basically and then we'll jump to another, in another interesting topics. So stick with me if you wish to learn more about kernel space. And see you guys in the next one. Peace. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Again, guidedhacking.com slash donate. Patreon.com slash guidedhacking. Please support us so that we can continue to make videos. And peace out.